Welcome to EarthBeat on the Real News Network. I'm Daphne Weisham. In the aftermath of the partial nuclear meltdown in Fukushima, Japan, all eyes are turned on the nuclear industry at home and abroad. Today we have the opportunity to have a debate between one proponent of nuclear power and another who suggests that this may not be the way forward. Welcome to The Real News. Thanks for joining us. Eileen Subko is Vice President of Energy Resources International. Thanks for joining us. And Dr. Arjun Makajani is the President of the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research and is a, a an, an engineer with background in nuclear fission. Thanks Fusion. for joining. Fusion. So let's start with you, Eileen. Um, what do you say to, to critics who say, look, this accident was so spectacular that it really should result in, at the very least, a moratorium on new, new nuclear power plants in this country? Well, I don't think that, th I agree that the accident in uh, Fukushima, Japan was um, clearly beyond their design basis, but I don't think that's a reason to have a knee-jerk reaction here in the United States. Um, while some of our plants are 30 and 40 years old, um, we've continually been updating the design basis of those plants. There have been reassessments of the plants since the, for example, the September 11th, uh, 2001 terrorist attacks that have changed not just the equipment of the plants, but the way we operate the plants. And we're prepared for disasters such as this, and even things as severe as an airplane crash into the plant, severe fires and explosions. Um, and the U.S. nuclear industry will continue to make assessments after we learn the details of this accident. We're not going to stand still and stand in place. We'll make sure that our plants are operated safely. Dr. Makajani, what do you say to that? Well, I think we need to do two things. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has been certifying designs of new reactors in the so-called nuclear renaissance, which isn't really happening, but new reactors that are proposed. I think we should take a pause and reevaluate the basis on which these certifications are taking place. Do we have enough depth in the emergency um, power supply and power plants? Do we have two layers, three layers? Do we need two layers, three layers, or more? Because what happened here is the emergency generation <coughs> got knocked out, the power got knocked out, and in a reactor, which is really like a pressure cooker with heat on the inside, you need emergency cooling when the power gets knocked out. And the, 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 the other thing we need to do is we need to look at our existing reactors, which is a separate problem. Uh, this, at Fukushima, we have spent fuel pools, mm -hmm. and there's water boiling in those pools. They need to be kept cool. We have spent fuel pool vulnerabilities that have been talked about by Brookhaven, Brookhaven National Lab and the National Academies of Science, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission isn't paying attention. Eileen, in terms of the uh, seismic activity in this country, some suggest that Japan, because it's on the rim of fire, it's a geologically very active region of the world, that a 9.0 magnitude earthquake could never happen here, followed by a tsunami. And yet, uh, we do have quite a few nuclear power plants in geologically active parts of the, the country, such as California, even Washington State. Uh, we do, and, and, and each... What, what, and, and what is the likelihood of a, an earthquake of that magnitude uh, taking place, and just how prepared are we for A, a tsunami, and B, uh, for the total shutdown of power, such as which we, what we've seen taking place in Fukushima? Well, each nuclear power plant has to assess the uh, probability of earthquake, tsunami, if it's appropriate, obviously in the middle of, of Iowa, you're probably not going to have a tsunami, but flooding would be an issue there, hurricanes, um, total station blackout, which is what we're talking about, loss of power. All plants have to be able to assess that and they have to be able to survive. Plants have backup diesel generators and in addition to the backup diesel generators there's an ad additional backup power supplies that have been added at plants since September 11th. The, the idea is the plants have to be able to cope if some catastrophic um, failure occurs at the plant, potentially loss of some of the plant systems like we're seeing here. Um, the, with respect to earthquake, you can't compare a nine-point um, earthquake in Japan to an earthquake in the United States. The geographies are different. You have to look at the specific seismic conditions at the site, and each plant is designed for the specific geological conditions at those sites and environmental conditions at those sites. Are we prepared, uh, Arjun Makajani, well, for, for an earthquake? Even, even a 7.1 or an 8.0 
in in California. I mean, we had we had one what a seven point uh, three or so back in the late eighties in San Francisco. Um, are we prepared for those kinds of earthquakes in the San Onofre um, and uh, Diablo Canyon nuclear power plants? Well, what we're looking at in Japan is not only a, a power station blackout because the grid has gone, but a destruction of the infrastructure around. It's very difficult to get equipment in there. It's very difficult to hook things up. Mm -hmm. We don't have adequate knowledge of what's gone on inside the reactors. Just imagine two weeks ago, if we'd had this debate and you'd ask, do you think the Japanese plants are designed safely enough for all contingencies, and what would Tokyo Electric Company have said? Uh, so I want us to imagine that situation and then post as to whether we're sanguine. I, I, I'm not a seismologist. I do know that the plants that have been licensed, as Eileen said, have gone through a seismic evaluation. And as Jas Chairman Yasko testified yesterday, you calculate the acceleration and the shaking of the ground and design according to that. But I have two caveats. I think that um, we're not, we need to take a pause and not issue a press release saying everything is all right, don't worry. I think even the NRC <laughs> seems headed in a direction of evaluating which plants may not have been adequately evaluated. They may not be the ones on the California coast. They may be along the New Madrid Fault in the, in the east and south. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that if we do not take a pause, I'm not saying reactors should be shut down, even though, and I wouldn't say that that's a knee-jerk reaction. Germany has decided to shut down seven plants before, be, that were designed or operational before 1970. I would not call that reaction a knee-jerk reaction. I'm not, I haven't considered what should happen here adequately enough. Mm -hmm. I haven't had time to take a deep breath. But I think to say that that is knee-jerk is uh, truly an excessive characterization. I think we need to take a deep breath and reassess every single power plant and we need to reassess the relicensing of old power plants as to whether it has been done adequately. Do you think not. that's an appropriate step to take? The on? nuclear industry actually is reassessing as we mm -hmm. speak. Every plant in the country is going through their backup safety systems, making sure the systems that they have in place are adequate. Um, it, cur currently, with what we know now and what the current design basis is, when this, when the results of this accident, when we know what happened and what the conditions were, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission the Nuclear Energy Institute, all the nuclear operating companies. Um, there's an organiza international organization called the World Association of Nuclear Operators and its um, sister organization here in the United States, the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations. They're all going to work together and make sure that nuclear power plants, not just in the United States but around the world, um, assess their ability to meet beyond design basis events and to make sure that if we need to make design changes, those design changes will be made. If we meet, need to make changes in how we operate the plants, we'll do that. The industry, it's the industry's benefit to make sure that we operate these plants safely. And trust me, it'll, it'll happen. Oh. Now, one of the things that is, is somewhat alarming about uh, the situation in Japan is that we're realizing that uh, when, when these spent fuel rods are placed in the, in, essentially, uh, in the open. Um, there, there, there's water on top of them, but the water has been leaking out uh, due to fractures in the, in the vessel. Um, it, it appears that uh, we aren't able to control some of the boiling of the, and the evaporation of the water, and therefore um, this, this is proving to be a very problematic issue for the Japanese. My question is, in this country, if the, si if the designs are similar, what's to prevent a terrorist from, for example, crashing a plane into some of those and spewing radioactivity into the surrounding area. And, and that's exactly the kind of scenario that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission just required within the past, since 2002 orders, required the nuclear industry to assess how they mitigate against an accident or an incident such as that. They have to be able to mitigate against an airplane crash explosions. These are desi beyond design bases. This isn't the basic design of the are plant. We, are have to show are we prepared for, I, I such a, for such well, an attack? I, I think this is a very limited view of what's happening. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has required new reactors that are not yet built. The reactors themselves to have uh, aircraft crash resistance. But what we're not doing, and the two things the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has ignored consistently for quite some time. 
before 9-11, the Brookhaven National Lab did a study for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. At spent fuel pools at closed power plants, what are the consequences of a spent fuel pool accident? And they calculated that within a 300, uh, 500 mile radius, there could be between 1,900 fatal cancers and 138,000 fatal cancers. And the financial damages would be between 700 million and more than 500 billion. What did the Nuclear Regulatory Commission do? And what has it done to date? Nothing. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has said it's a very low probability event and we're not going to respond to low probability events. Okay, in Eileen's saying, hold, in stop, 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 right there. Eileen, you said that's not true. That's what, not what true. Um, in 2002, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission issued security orders, some of which addressed um, the configuration of spent nuclear fuel in the spent fuel pools. In 2009, they put those orders, and these orders were um, safeguarded orders. The uh, information in them was not made public, but in 2009, they put into place final regulations that May implemented requirements. Utilities have made changes in the, the um, heat load of the fuel stored in, the f in the, their spent fuel pools, the configuration of the fuel in their pools. Some of them have ad had to add additional equipment and additional cooling capabilities. The industry has, ha has made significant actions to address issues associated with loss of coolant in the spent fuel, potential loss of coolant. Just to give this one scenario, because I don't, I don't think anybody expected the uh, Twin Towers uh, to collapse in the aftermath of the terrorist attacks on September 11th. Are you suggesting that a, an airliner with jet fuel, like the, like the airliners that, uh, that crashed into the Twin Towers, if they were to fly into a nuclear power plant, you're suggesting that we would be fine the, the, in the aftermath of, of a crash like that? The industry has had to do analyses and, and show that they have the capability to mitigate any impacts associated with that. Would there, if there was a loss of, of coolant in the spent fuel pool, they would have to show that they can, can provide additional coolant. They would, if there was a loss of, for example, their generators that supply backup power to the pumps that, that cool, provide cooling water and circulation in the spent fuel pools, they'd have to have backup power supplies. They have to be able to show that they can cope for an indefinite period of time with a complete loss of power. But in site. Japan, for some reason, they didn't have all of those backup. Every uh, country didn't take the sa have the same reaction that we had post 9-11. Mm. We took, think about mm. just in your uh, airport security, that, that we've taken a much mm -hmm. stronger response and that's included what we've done at nuclear power plants. Have well, we taken a, have we taken a very it, thorough I, approach that's, I, that's I exceptional? I don't think so. Well, we, we, there have been changes, but I don't think it is thorough. In 2006, the National Academies of Science published a report on what should be done. There have been many other suggestions that spent fuel should not only be reconfigured, that's not enough. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has allowed uh, nuclear utilities to uh, store spent fuel closer and closer together, increasing the heat load, and reconfiguration doesn't solve that whole problem. The, NR uh, the National Academy said you should empty the spent fuel pools of the old spent fuel as much as possible so there's a minimum amount stored that is absolutely necessary. And has that been done? And that has not been ordered. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is very reluctant to impose significant costs on the industry. Why even is that? I don't know. That you have to ask Chairman Yasko. But they completely blew off the National Academy's main recommendation that the spent fuel pool should. And our recommendation from the outside, including many scholars, has been to harden the storage against terrorist attack, harden dry storage, as they do in Germany. But that has also not been ordered. So why is it that the, uh, the industry is not responding to the National Academies or the Brookhaven studies, as, as Arjun has suggested? Well, th the nuclear industry responds to Nuclear Regulatory Commission regulations. And we've worked with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to ensure that spent fuel storage, both in pools and in dry storage, is safe. And the changes that have been made have been significant at some sites. Um, I disagree that we need to move all spent fuel out of the spent fuel pools and put it in Not hardened all. I didn't say all. Well, we can't do that. And put it in hardened on-site storage mm -hmm. the, or to accelerate doing that. It's not necessary. Um, if, if, if you can show that you can provide adequate cooling in the event of a se severe accident or incident, something as severe as, as an airplane crash, 
and th that you can cope with that, then then we've we've done our job and we're, we're keeping people safe and okay, we're so operating the plant safely. So let's 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 let's, let's 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 switch to the the, the issue of cost, um, because one of the reasons yeah, one of the reasons that. Um, Opponents of nuclear power are opposed to nuclear power as they suggest it's not financially viable on its own without these loan guarantees. Uh, we've got wind energy that's competitive with natural gas. We've got solar energy taking off. What do you say to that? Why, after, after <coughs> decades of, of public sub subsidies, why is it that the nuclear industry still cannot stand on its own feet? Well, I would disagree that the nuclear industry can't stand on its own feet. We're operating 104 nuclear power plants in the United States that supply 20% of our electricity, and we've been operating those plants for 40, 30 to 40 years. But with public subsidies of I one would, form or another? I would disagree. The, the uh, nuclear operating companies are, are, are standing on their own two feet in terms of operating those plants. We don't get subsidies from the government. You get so loan guarantees, The though. loan guarantees are for new plants. Mm -hmm. And new plants um, will be assessed by individual companies that whether they, d they decide to seek building those or some other form of electrical generation based on whether or not they can economically operate the plants. In some service territories, um, companies have made a decision to go forward and build new plants. In other places in the country, they believe natural gas right now, the price of it is too low, they can't compete, and so okay. they're not building. And what do you say to the issue of cost? Well, companies are not going forward on a market basis. They have said repeatedly, we're not going to risk investor money and water. Wall Street has said repeatedly, we're not going to fund you, it's too risky, it's a bet the farm risk. The CEO of General Electric, which makes nuclear reactors, wind and gas turbines, has said, if I were the chief of, of a utility, I would never do nuclear. That's pretty close to an exact quote. The, that's why they are the door hat in hand for not only for government loan guarantees, but financing from the federal financing bank. Plus, they're in the pocketbooks of the ratepayers. The only plants that are going ahead right now in the South, in, in Georgia and South Carolina and Florida, are where the legislature has required ratepayers to add to their electricity bills and give advance money to utilities without the utility ever guaranteeing they're going to finish the plant and give them electricity in return for their money. It's actually worse than a tax. You pay, but you don't get a guarantee that you'll get anything in return. One of the points that Arjun has raised is the issue of exposure of populations in the vicinity of the nuclear power plants, the, the increase in cancer rates and so on. What do you say to that? Well, the study that he was referring to was looking at a severe situation, which I believe um, was all of the spent, all of the water being drained from the spent nuclear fuel pool. and. Um, Zerk fire, a, a fire occurring which would cause the release, rupture of fuel and the release of, release of significant radioactivity. A scenario such as that is something that the utilities are, are designed to, to design their plants to mitigate against. So and you're saying we, that, that the risk of cancer the, the around nuclear power plants is, is low? The, pro the probability of the type of accident that Arjun was talking about is, is, is beyond credible. And, and so the, the, the risk of that kind of an accident is, is okay. nowhere near where he says it is. 30 it's seconds. not beyond credible. It's happening now. So it cannot be beyond credible anymore. How, it, and how do, you, how do you source that? It's happening now. Where it's happening it? now in Japan. Uh -huh. We've got a spent fuel pool in reactor number four that had hydrogen explosion. You don't know that. that that is the best that we can tell from the mm -hmm. fog of the crisis. Mm -hmm. The chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory mm -hmm. Commission, in dispute with the Japanese mm -hmm. company, has said the water has evaporated. So we're actually looking at a spent fuel pool crisis right now. I do not believe that the reactor buildings in Mark I reactors or spent fuel pools that are outside the reactor buildings could withstand a 747 air crash. I, I, think, I think this issue has not been addressed and those spent fuel pools should be emptied, and the NRC is very reluctant. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on The Real News Network. Eileen Subko, Arjun Makajani, I'm Daphne Weishan. Thank you for watching.